When you think of Africa, you've got the classic Kenya scenes of the flat plains and the wildebeest and the elephants and lions and all the rest of it. This South African state or nation, this is just completely different. Anyone who's comfortable with hunting the Rocky Mountain states would love this. Everything looks like and feels like home. Africa, the dark continent, looks pretty bright to those who love wildlife and hunting. Except the game back home never looked quite like this. Is he ever gonna stop? Bull's still going in the front, right? Still in the front. 280, 280. You got an open shot. Winchester Legends is brought to you by Winchester Repeating Arms, the guns that work, Swarovski Optic, Truck Vault, manufacturers of the world's finest secure in-vehicle storage systems, SOS Outdoor Products, quality gear for the outdoor enthusiast, She Safari, clothing for her expedition. The grasslands, plateaus, and mountains might look like Wyoming, but this natural terrain lies southeast of Durban, where professional hunter Chris Broster of Crusader Safaris leads clients over familiar country. That black wildebeest was really cool. I didn't know it was on the agenda. I knew they were in the area because that is sort of the grazing animal of the plains of Southern Africa. Uh, we had an exciting black wildebeest hunt. It's pretty challenging out in the open. So you've got to sit pretty tight. They've got good eyesight, like to run in circles, and figures of eight. So you go to a place where they usually hang out, move them off, and th there's a good chance that they'll come back. When we saw those guys up on the top of those Stormberg Mountain plateaus, I was pretty excited. I don't know, they're a freaky looking animal. They sort of look in broadside profile. They look like a rhinoceros. They've got that roach of a mane there on their necks, which makes them look real hump neck. And then they've got that goofy hair, that stiff hair coming off the end of their noses. And in profile, it looks like they've got a little bit of a rhinoceros nose coming off. There's some black wildebeest. Where? About a mile. Away out there. Way over there. We could not get anywhere within shooting range of these guys until my impressive professional hunter, Chris, hit on a neat idea. He said, let's just get on a high point and sit. They're in the area, they're always up here. At some point, they're gonna crisscross and we might get a shot. We might be able to belly closer, but they might come right to us too. I can see them way out there. You know, what I may do is, if I just stay there and come out behind them and get them moving. But let's just see what they do. We've got lots of time, so if they're just staying there, we can get him to maybe just give him a little bump mm -hmm. and they might they right. might head our way. Hey, here come, come a couple from right over here. They're right in with those uh, blesbuck. Okay, yes. See, they yes. just walked into them? It's a cow and a calf. Yeah. They mix together like that, huh? But they all hang out together. The blesbuck and the wildebeest, the zebra. So they were in mixed herds like that years ago? Yes, and the springbuck, the red hartebeest hang out with the blesbuck. That's just like our bison and antelope back in the States. Mm -hmm. Millions of them roaming the plains and then the market hunting is what got them. Un unregulated hunting, you know, if you control it, you know, just harvest the annual surplus, that's no different than cattle or anything else. You can have them in perpetuity. That's actually interesting you say that. A similar thing happened with the black wildebeest as happened with the, with the bison in the States. In the 1950s, there were only 600 black wildebeest left in Africa. The conservationists no suddenly woke up and landowners, everyone worked together and they realized there was a problem and the black wildebeest was going to be extinct pretty soon. And through conservation and sustainable utilization, there's over 100,000 black wildebeest in, in Africa 50 years later. Mm -hmm. And that's just because there's been a value put onto onto wildlife and good conservation management. 
So has it all been done on government reserves or private ground or what? Private ground, government reserves, everyone's worked very well together. That's good. See, there goes a bull back in the front there. The one in the front's the bull? Yeah. Huh. Goofy things are going right back. They're called the clowns of the plains. You'll see them, they just run in circles. That's what they're doing. Boy, they're coming. Okay, there's... Yeah, there There's our come. big bull in the front there. Oh, yeah. Just, just, just stick on him, you can see his body's quite a bit bigger. Oh, yeah, he's quite a bit bigger. Never gonna stop. The bull's still going in the front. Right? He's still in the front. Okay, okay there. You've you got an open shot. Winchester Legends is brought to you by Redhead, finest in the field since 1856. Swarovski Optic. Truck Vault, manufacturers of the world's finest secure in vehicle storage systems. Otis Technology, from the front lines to the hunt of a lifetime, the most advanced gun cleaning systems in the world. There's one okay, there's the last old beast there. Well, here we are. We've got an opportunity to hunt a big bull. Chris had seen a pretty good sized one running with this big herd of cows and calves. And they're crazy animals. I mean, you see them from 600 yards away and they suddenly throw their tails in the air and then it's just and they're running off like they've this, been shot at every day of their lives. Boy, they're coming. You just go. Okay, there's, yeah, there there's our come. big bull in the front there. Oh, yeah. Just, just, just stick on him, you can see his body's quite a bit bigger. Oh, yeah, he's quite a bit bigger. Stop. The bull's still going in the front. Right? He's still in the front. Okay, they're, the, they're slowing down. They're slowing down. God. They're slowing down. Nice. Okay, How they've far? stopped. How far is that? 280, 280. Okay, there. You, you've got an open shot. Oh, he smoked him. He's going down. There he goes. Right on, good shot. Right on, good shot. Wow, that, that did him in nicely. Yeah, they don't often go down that quick. No, he was, shot him about there. He was at the edge of this. Yeah, he was at the thing there and he ran, and ran about this 10 way. yards, 20 yards. No, I can see a horn sticking up right there. Isn't that a horn? Yeah, there's horns though. It was nice and long. It wasn't so, now it is. Okay, we're good. Oh. Yeah, well, it's a, he's wide and he's long. So you look for the length of the horn? Yeah, you see, you want him to be level. Okay. There. Then you know you've you got a really big bull. Like a, a smaller bull will stop about okay. over there. Mm -hmm. It's like five mm -hmm. inches difference. Mm -hmm. And then he's got nice spread and big, big bosses. Look how gnarly he is there. He's really dried out, yeah. cracked up. Is that a sign of an older bull? Yeah, that's an old, old mature stud. <laughs> he's got this cool white mane. Check it. Look at his mane over oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's that hump that I was always seeing. Yeah. And, you know, in the profile, they, they look like a rhino because they've got this big hump neck. Big chest, and, and then, then he's got his... up like, like a horn, a blunt horn sticking up on him. That yeah. is a peculiar looking animal. He's, he's got a big white tail too, like a horse. And they call it the white-tailed gnu, right? White-tailed gnu. Is Do they his... pronounce it gnu or nu? Gnu. Gnu. When he came running right at us, <laughs> that old head. Okay, there. You've got an open shot. Hit him perfectly in the shoulder. Yeah. John Black. Good job, partner. <laughs> Here comes some more fun. Birds are on the agenda. Boy, those pointers of yours are intense. Better stay ahead. Uh -huh. Range is on point, yeah. Steady. Good shooting. 
boy, this just looks and feels like the Owyhee Desert back home. He's got it. Good dogs. And this is the gray-winged Franklin. Gray-winged partridge. But this place is crawling with birds. And in the grass in the cornfield, they've got Franklins. They call them partridges, red wings, gray wings. I don't know. They've got half a dozen of the things. Oh! 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 That is sweet. <laughs> Woo! Man, if we had another hour, we'd have 10 birds. Chris, this is something. How long were we out here? Not an hour. This is uh, quite a day already. Now. And here we get upland birds in the afternoon, and now we're going to go back for some more geese in the morning. And this South Africa is really is the land of infinite variety. Yeah, always... A lot of variation. Yeah. You need to scout and find out where there's a good population of ducks and or geese. So you could set up, study them, figure out where they're flying, when, what part of the day, because it's not going to be a mass migration coming in and using an area. You got a nice to break up the big game hunting like this. Mm -hmm. A lot more action. A little more work and a lot more action. Wait, here, here, come here. here comes, here comes. Yeah, 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 hold on. Good shot. Oh, yeah. You're in front of two of them. Come, come. Keep coming. Get the small one and miss the big one. Unbelievable. Slap me. Slap me. Has that been committed suicide? You're tickling me. Uh, I know, it's right in my face. This South African feast isn't over yet. There are bushbuck in the hills. Winchester Legends is brought to you by Winchester Repeating Arms, the guns that work. Redhead, finest in the field since 1856. She Safari, clothing for her expedition. SOS Outdoor Products, quality gear for the outdoor enthusiast. Otis Technology, from the front lines to the hunt of a lifetime, the most advanced gun cleaning systems in the world. So, Ron, I'm heading back to Africa this summer. Again? Again. Are oh, you lucky, sucker? Where is it this time? I'm going to be taking a, or trying to take my elephant and then doing some other planes games. So, Ron, do you think most people go over there overgunned? You know, I think uh, the mistake a lot of people make is they use a 300 Magnum, which is great, but I got to thinking, gee, I'm shooting these 20 to 80 pound antelope, and why not take a small, what I would use over here for pronghorns, for instance, a 243. You know, that 300 Magnum, whether it's the short or the long grain, will take care of any antelope in Africa. But for the smaller game, those little diker steam bucks, dick dicks, clip springers, I mean, there are a lot of little antelope that don't weigh any more than 100 pounds. Why shoot a big, uh, big bullet and a big cartridge at those little antelope, dude? 50, 60 pounders. It seems like overkill, huh? The safari has been as great a romantic adventure for women as it has for men since hunters first began traveling to Africa. And women have proven to be as passionate about hunting as men. Beautiful Thank you. Thank you very much. It did really well. It's beautiful. A profound exhilaration for him and for her. proved to be difficult. We just weren't finding any bush buck. They call them rams. We were finding females just where they said they would be, in the little openings on the brushy hillsides early in the morning, soaking up the sun. And they're gorgeous little brown, red-brown animals. But we wanted one of the charcoal ones, because the males are really dark, almost black. If Chris was by himself scouting, he might see two or three. I could never see one. We've been looking for bush buck for the last 10 days, not necessarily hunting one. You know, we were off the Kudu and Yala, but if we bumped into a bushbuck, we were going to take it. Every day, we had our eyes open for a bushbuck, just figuring that in the course of a 10-day safari, you're going to find one. Uh, a decent bull, but uh, not good enough. No. Just going to come around here. 
We're oh. down, in, down in that brushy bottom? Yeah, and it, just across the valley there. Oh, on that hillside? Yeah, and, they, and you just watch out in those openings there. Okay. We'll just drive by here, park the truck, and then we'll just walk back here, and then we'll glass from there. Okay. You just, you just need to look in those openings, like the way the thick stuff is. Okay, so And where you see those openings, they'll come out and sun themselves. I see a reddish female with stripes on it. Is that a bush buck? Where? Okay. It's yes, red yes, with, there, there. with white stripes. No, no, that's, that's, a, that's a Nyala female. That's a Nyala? Yeah. I guess what they do is they come out of the trees and feed in those open fields on some grass that Chris described. And then in the morning, as soon as the light's on, they start filtering back up in there, just like a wary old elk or whitetail. See the white spots on his flank. Okay, there we go. They, they, they just picked up his head. Good red. Call my shot for me. Okay, as soon as he lifts his head, take him. All right. There he is. You ready? When he turns his head, okay. Oh, good shot. It got him. Good shot. Cool. Very tough animal. Cool. All right, my first Cape Bushbuck. Man, how many days have we been looking for those guys? Uh, about six, five? Five or six days That's we've been out there looking for them. Ah, there he is. There he is. I, 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 cool. Right on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful old Bushbuck. That makes for a nice hunt to be able to target specific animals yeah. like that. And it's not easy. You know, it's, it's tough. It takes time, patience. You've got to hunt them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, you're not just going to walk into a field and find a ram yeah. like ever uh, we seen. found that out. we've we been looking for one all week I mean, this is the first ram i've seen yeah ron this is a very mature animal it's even rubbed down a little bit yeah did horn do they favor one side or another like sheep do yeah and wear one down that's exactly what it is just they're probably pretty long out there too oh i guess they had to have been a lot longer as thick as it is yeah this one's pointy here. here's the twist the spirals so just like an eland sort of yeah, and a Nyala. He's the smallest of the of the four spiral horns we get here in, in South Africa. So the, the Elan's the biggest, Elan, then the Kudu. Then the Kudu, then the Nyala, the and then the Bushbuck. And, and that's it for the spiral horned antelope here. In South Africa. In Southern Africa. Yeah. Well, what do you think? We get this guy uh, put up and go see if we can't find that Elan. That's what we'll do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Boy, that is an old ram. Last morning luck. Hey, I didn't think we were ever going to get one. I mean, this is the last day, my friend. South Africa's got a reputation of good service and friendly people. Our primary line of business is trophy hunting, but we offer it an experience in a different country, seeing a different culture, and just seeing something, doing something new and something neat. Is he ever gonna stop? That's not done. You know, a lot of my buddies back home think Africa is some weird place that has nothing to do with them. You know, it's foreign country, the animals are foreign, they look weird. Why would I want to come over here? Any red-blooded hunter from any part of this planet has a heritage in Africa. It's ours. The first human hunters came out of Africa and learned to pick up rocks and sticks and harvest game. And we've been doing it ever since. Just because we live in North America doesn't mean we can't come over here and sample what is our heritage as people living on planet Earth, as hunters living in what is essentially Eden over here. They've got more diversity of antelope species than we do of duck species. You can find swamp animals, mountaintop animals, forest animals, grassland animals, lots of game. It's yours as much as anyone else's on this planet. Hey, I'm coming back to Africa just as soon as I can. It'll be waiting. 
it's people conserving what they now realize is their heritage too. An incredible variety of wildlife found nowhere else on earth. Birds and mammals that make Africa the special destination it has become or perhaps the most legendary of all hunting grounds. For more information about Winchester products, log on to winchester.com.